What's up YouTube? Robbie Vapes back with another video and today we're gonna forget about sub ohm tanks. That's right, we're taking a break from them. We're going back to my favorites, the RDAs. Uh, this is not a new RDA, this is my Mutation X V2. I have it on my Stingray X clone. Uh, this thing is amazing. I mean, I forgot how much vapor these things chuck. Got my hard coil build in here, love it. Um, the flavor is good. I got some new e juice I'm gonna talk about here really soon. And uh, yeah, I mean this, I missed RDAs for sure. I, I forgot how much I love these things. So I'm taking another hit and then we'll get into the juices, what else I bought at the vape shop a couple days ago, and uh, then we'll get up close and we'll check out all the new things I got. So I'm gonna take a hit here. Oh, now that is vapor. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Forgot how much I loved RDAs. It, oh, so good, so good. So today we have three new vapes we're gonna check out, three new e-liquids we're gonna check out, all by the same line. The line is called, called Bio Vapes. We have three flavors here. I'm gonna do them in order from my least favorite to my most favorite. Talk about some pros and cons to them. This is kind of like a mini juice review. I won't get into too much detail. Uh, here we have the Apocalypse. This is a orange cream skull. Flavor's really good in it. It's a 60-40 mix. They're all marked as Max VG. Uh, this is the Synesthesia. This is a rainbow sherbet or rainbow ice cream type flavor. Uh, again, flavors there. It's really good. And this is my personal favorite. I love this juice. This is so good. It's called Scorch V2. It's a strawberry custard with a hint of butterscotch in it. And it is unbelievable. Um, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about the con first. There's really only one con to this juice. It's got a really nice consistency. It's got really good flavor. But there is one con. These are all three milligrams, so that's what I've been, I've been vaping on. I've been vaping on three milligrams pretty much since I got into RDAs three, four months ago. Um, I, I can't do much higher than that on RDAs, as I'm sure most people can't. Uh, this orange cream one, it's strong. For three milligrams, it honestly hits like a nine, uh, nine plus milligram v, uh, nicotine mix. It is strong. It's got a major throat hit. I tried it in even one of the sub tanks, and I couldn't do it. It's just too strong for my liking. It's it's I don't know if it's just a batch I got, but it's, it's super super strong And again, that's only three milligrams. The next one I got was synesthesia um, again three milligram Kind of vapes like between a six and a nine milligram though. It's it's pretty strong I can do it in a clear miser. I don't necessarily enjoy it. It still has a pretty harsh throat hit um, But I definitely can't do it in a dripper. It's it's just too much for me and finally the scorch v2 three milligram as well and this is why I think these two are a bad batch. Um, this one's a little bit stronger. It's definitely more than three. It, it hits more like three, or it hits like more than three, but it's not too bad. I would say it's somewhere between a three and a six, give or take. Uh, it's definitely vapable in an RDA, in a clear miser. It's amazing. Uh, I'm liking it. So again, this is a BioVapes line. It's really good, super good flavors. I mean, the flavor here is amazing. It's a Max VG. It's 60-40, and that leads me to go off on a tangent a little bit here. Um, and this isn't directed at these guys, because if you can see this, and I'll go, I'll do an up close on these as well, just really quickly to show off what they look like. Uh, this is actually a relatively thick e-liquid for a 60-40 mix. But one thing I'm kind of, kind of getting tired of, and I don't know if it's just me or maybe other people feel this way, but is it, like, am I the only one who thinks that people are throwing, throwing around the term Max VG way too much these days? I mean, I swear, it's it's like there's 50-50 blends that are max VG. It, to me, a max VG is like an 80-20 and 90-10. That's max VG. In fact, even 80-20s, most of them I wouldn't consider a max VG. Now, again, this stuff is really good, and it's very thick for a 60-40 blend. And I'm kind of surprised it's only a 60-40 blend, because it definitely hits more like an 80-20. But again, it's just, I, I, I don't know, I'm going off on tangent here, but... Why are people all using the term Max VG these days? It just doesn't make any sense to me. It's just being thrown around like, like it's nothing. It's kind of like the word premium e-juice. I mean, everyone has premium e-juice now. You can get $8 premium e-juice. Did you know that? I didn't know that either. Apparently you can. But it's not premium e-juice. Like, come on, guys. Like, you know, I understand that there's a certain marketing aspect to this whole thing. But realistically... You know, Max VG is not 60-40s usually. Again, this is kind of an exception. It's actually a really nice mix. But, um, like, usually, you know, 50-50s are not Max VG. 40-60s are not Max VG. And it, I, I can't imagine 
in these strange worlds where people are thinking that that's max VG. And again, it's just, I'm going off on tangent. I don't want to throw any names under the bus or anything like that, but it's bothering me a lot lately. And it's just a pet peeve of mine. Nothing crazy, like nothing special about it, but I just, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, are you guys tired of hearing about max VG all the time? Or is it just me who seems to be hearing about it? Um, I mean, literally, I'm going to come up with a water that's max VG next. I'm just going to get a bottle of water, put max VG on it, and then I'm going to start selling it as vape or as e-liquid. Because that's what people are doing. I don't get it. I, I just... Anyways, enough about that. So I got some juices. Awesome, right? Uh, I also got something that's very important. Uh, mine just broke a couple days ago, so I have to go and get a new one. I'm really liking this one. This is a new ohm reader I got. This is USB chargeable. Any kind of phone, or the traditional phone, uh, I think it's a micro or mini USB, will charge this thing. Uh, no problem at all. I'll go up close and personal with this one as well so you can see it. And lastly, the one thing I was really excited to buy, I've been looking for this for a while, and that is the El Diablo clone. And I'm not quite sure who it's by. It's by no name, but it's a really good clone from what I can see so far. I've taken it apart. Haven't vaped on it yet. I've cleaned it out a little bit though, so there shouldn't be any machining oil in there or anything like that. I'll do a build on here as well, so you can see what uh, what you're working with on these ones. And from there, um, it's not gonna be a special build. I was working on a really cool build I thought would work out, and it turns out it failed miserably, which I'm assuming is all part, part of building, right? I mean, you build a coil, it doesn't work as well as you thought it would, and you have to scrap it. I mean, that's just part of what us builders do. I mean, you, you build, you build, you build until you find the right build, and then once you find it, you end up vaping it, just like this hard coil. So good. Anyways, so let's get up close and personal with all these things. I'll show you what I mean um, by the Max VG and show you the uh, unboxing of the El Diablo. Uh, and then what we'll do, do a quick coil build on here, just something simple, straightforward. And uh, then we'll vape it and see how it goes. All right, YouTube, we're back with the up close and personal. Just wanted to put my Stingray X there in the picture. Uh, I'm going to unscrew this up top and put it on the ohm reader. We'll do the ohm reader first because it's the quickest one to review real quick. Uh, I don't even know what kind this is. I just bought it at the local vape, stop, vape store. It's, uh, let's see here. So we'll screw that on. And I think it reads at about 0 0.28 to 0.25. This build should be around there. I don't know if it is. Let's check it out. And 0.13 apparently, which is not right, I don't think. Um, we've done these hardcore builds before, it came out, came out to about 0.2. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about that. I'm kind of worried about it reading a little bit low. Um, I hope it's reading low and that's not actually the build. Uh, if it is, then that would surprise me. But uh, again, traditional six wraps, 24 gauge canthal, nothing too crazy. Um, it, yeah, not dual wrapped, not twisted, nothing like that. It's just straight up six wraps. Um, yeah, so maybe it is 0.13. I don't think it is, but maybe I've been wrong this whole time. Anyways, so that's the uh, ohm reader. Like I said, I'm a little bit worried about it reading low. It might be because there's a little battery maybe. I don't know. Um, I hope that's the case. Otherwise, uh, it might not be working right. Or my Mutation XV2 isn't reading right. I don't know. It could be a connection somewhere. Who knows? Anyways, moving on to the e-liquid. Uh, so that was kind of disappointing with the ohm reader, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I'll keep it on video. I don't want to remove it or play with it or anything like that. If it didn't work, it didn't work. And if it did work, then I've been building lower than I thought this whole time. So here we have all these 60-40 blends. Again, these are three milligrams each. See down there. This is the orange cream skull one. I think it's called orange cream. Got a little bit uh, smudged there. Here is the e-liquid, again for 60-40, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily max VG to me, but it is pretty thick, I mean, you can see it just kind of running down there. It, it does hit like an 80-20, but I guess it is a little bit more runny than I thought. So that's the uh, orange cream. The synesthesia, it's up here, same thing, this is like a rainbow ice cream, 3 milligrams. Biovapes. I uh, won't take that out. And this again is my favorite. This is the Scorch V2 Strawberry Custard. And again, it's got a hint of butterscotch too, which is really nice. Three milligrams, 60, 40 VGPG. Uh, and you know what? 
Maybe it doesn't say Max VG. I thought one of them said Max VG, but I was wrong. So I apologize, BioVapes, by the way, for uh, misreading your labels. I'm clearly just blind. Uh, this doesn't have it on there. Yeah, so this just says 6040 VGPG. Doesn't actually say Max VG. That's good. Um, so again, I, I stick by my rant, but it's good to know that these guys aren't uh, aren't mislabeling their products either. So that's really nice to hear. Uh, I'll move these off to the side and let's get to the main attraction here. So to, here we have the, it's a clone obviously, just traditional clone box. And here we have the El Diablo. What you get in the box, you get uh, of course a screwdriver, how could you live without one? The uh, silica wick and a pre-built coil, which I mean this looks to be like 32 gauge. A couple spare O-rings and a couple spare screws as well. Put that off to the side. Get a drip tip with this one. Uh, wide bore but tight holes. I don't know if that makes any sense, but either way, I mean, I think it's 5 connected, so shouldn't be too bad. Should work with any kind of drip tip you have. Going down here, we have the El Diablo in gold. Let's see if I can't get a focus on there. El Diablo. This can be run in dual coil or single coil mode, so you can see by the three uh, airflow holes here. Let's uh, take it apart real quick. Oh, by the way, it has a Delrin insulator down here on the original. I don't know if this is Delrin. I think it, it feels more like plastic to me, but I could be wrong. Uh, so anyways, let's take it apart. And I may have to take it apart off camera so I don't knock everything over. Nope, we're good. So again, top cap here, adjustable airflow. Very easy to turn. So that should still be in dual coil mode. Yep. We turn it once more, I think. It'll be in single coil mode. May have turned it too much. Yeah, so there we have single coil mode. These two are blocked off. Uh, pretty good airflow, I think. I haven't actually tried it yet. Just washed it out a little bit. You can see here. Uh, not too much machining oil or anything like that, so that's good. And yeah, so that is the top cap coming up to the posts here. One thing I like is the nice big holes in here. Really easy to work on. Flathead screws are really nice as well. Uh, again, let's just open it up, show you how big these holes are. Really easy deck to work on. Nice deep juice well as well, I like that. Um, I would like to get an, an uh, authentic, but they're a little bit on my price range right now. I think they're going for like 110 up here. In, uh, in Canada. I haven't seen them for much cheaper than that. I'd be a buyer at around 70 to 80. I don't know if I'd be willing to go much higher than that. Uh, this clone was, I think, 40 or 35, something like that. Uh, so it's, it's actually a really good price. Um, I think I've seen them as cheap as 30 bucks elsewhere in Canada. So I'm guessing they're about 20 to 25 in the States uh, for the clone. I don't know how much the authentics are. I would probably guess about the 50, 60 dollar range because that's how much of a markup we have up here in Canada. Um, but yeah, so that's the up close and personal here. What we'll do next, we're actually going to build a coil on this deck and we'll test it out. We'll just do something basic. The idea I had actually, I'll tell you what I had before, the one that failed miserably. It was basically a traditional coil build. Um, I think it was six wraps, 24 gauge canthal. And what I decided to do on this, on it to make it different was to put cotton through the coil as well as around the coil. So it was like flooded with cotton. It just had so much cotton in there. And what happened was it got so hot and it just did not vape well at all. There was no flavor to it. You got a lot of burnt taste because there was just too much cotton there. The juice just couldn't soak up fast enough. So it failed miserably. I wanted to try something new for you guys. Clearly there's a reason that one hasn't been done yet. Um, so again, just, just word of caution, you know, never put too much cotton in there where it has a hard time getting through. So that's it. Uh, let's do a build and then we'll vape on it later on. All right guys, we're back. I have straightened out two pieces of canthal here. Again, this is 24 gauge. I've got my build box off to the side. Let's try and grab this so you can see it. Just two straight pieces of canthal. And again, this is gonna be a pretty straightforward build. Um, nothing crazy. To straighten it out, all I did was use my drill and uh, spin it around until it went flat like this. It actually came off this coil rack here. Um, as you can see, it's not the nicest, and you just unroll it a little bit, and you can see it bending right away. 
So all you have to do for straightening out Canthal, get a drill out, um, and basically use it to straighten it out. Just power drill works perfectly well. Hold it on one side with a pair of pliers or something, and start drilling, it'll flatten out in no time. But anyway, so yeah, so we have 24 gauge Canthal here. Uh, that's what we'll be using. And we'll put that off to the side because we already cut it. We'll be using a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, which are really nice to get in there, especially for cotton. We have our wire clippers here, of course. Uh, we have some Japanese cotton here. I have tons of this stuff. Can never have too much though. And uh, this screwdriver unfortunately won't work because it is a star, so I think I'm actually gonna have to use the one that it came with. So now I'm actually thankful it came with one. Um, and actually this is some of the coils from my build last night on my Mutation XV3 on a single coil I did. Um, this is just twisted 24 gauge canthal. I don't know if you can see that, but you can kind of see at the end there. Same strategy as what you do to straighten out canthal, but this time you have two of them together and just spin it around and it'll come out really nicely if you want to do a twisted build. Now again, for twisted builds, you're looking at a lot lower ohms, a lot lower resistance, so make sure you have a safe battery for these, especially because they can hit easily, you know, the 0.1 to 0.15 mark, no problem. Uh, I did a single coil one and it was hitting like 0.26 I think or 0.28. I have a picture on my Instagram if you want to check it out. I'll put a link in the uh, description below to that. But uh, yeah, so I got my build stuff here. We're going to be using this screwdriver here to wrap the coil if I can get it out. And then we'll use the screwdriver it came with to actually um, screw down the post and everything. So let's begin. Um, we're going to try and get this on camera here. Might be a little bit tricky. Just reaching over here for the bag. Grab out this screwdriver. Just so we have it handy. I will not be using silica wicks. I prefer Japanese cotton. I don't really like silica. I've never really used silica. That's just my preference. Um, I like the Japanese cotton. So let's grab one of these strands of canthal and let's see if we can do it on camera for once. It's actually extremely difficult, so I don't know how well it's gonna work out. This is a really long piece of canthal too. I didn't realize how long it was, but uh, I guess we're gonna have a bigger lead then. So what I do, twist, put it off to the side, and then get some leverage, and then just start going around. So there's one, two, three, Four, five, and six. Straighten it out. Now we'll unwind this one. Straighten it out back there. And then we'll unwind it once more so we can get it so that they're both facing the same direction. I find this is the hardest part is when you have to unwind that uh, leverage uh, wrap you did initially. I don't know if anyone else has that problem, but I seem to have that problem a lot. S squeeze it together. Hopefully this doesn't screw up too much. And twist it a little bit more. It does have a nice little kick in it, which I'll actually use to get it away from the side walls. But um, yeah, so that's the first coil. So we've got one. Uh, I'm going to trim this down here and uh, we'll make sure that we don't have this much leads. I'm going to trim down the other one and probably cut it in half so I can reuse it again. So about there. And roughly, let's see how long is that one. Let's make this one a little longer. At about there. So there we have our first lead. It's got a little bit of bend, a little bit more than I actually wanted, but uh, I should be able to straighten that out okay. Just push in a little bit. You want to play around with it just to try and get it to where you're comfortable. Um, right about that should work, I think. So let's put this in here. I'll move on to the second coil. 
Oh, it would help if this was unscrewed. And of course I wrapped on the wrong screwdriver. So let's just put that one on there. And let's unscrew these. In fact, I could probably do it by hand, but uh, so I can just unscrew it. Same thing, unscrew it and open up that last one as well. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is stick this one in here first in the center post and then put this one in on this far left post. And let's see if it works out the way I want it to. It's not too bad, that'll actually work. And let's see if we can't tighten this by hand at least a little bit to get it down more. Okay. So again, you're only going to uh, screw down the negative post first. You're going to leave the center post open because we'll be using it again for the other side. And we're just going to keep on trying to screw this. I don't like the screwdriver came with, but again, this is a clone, so I'm assuming you get a better one with the original. And that looks pretty good. We'll push it out just a little bit maybe. And that should work. Okay, so what we're going to do, do this another coil, six wraps on the other side. And again, got my piece of canthal. And we'll trim off a bit of it too, because it was just way too long. And uh, that should be good. So again, take a screwdriver, twist to the side a little bit. And we're gonna start wrapping, so there's one two, three, four, five, and six. Same thing as before, loosen the lead and unwrap this one one full time. Straighten it out a little bit. And that should be good enough. Push it into the side of the screwdriver, make sure it gets nice and tight. Uh, if I'm right, I'm gonna guess this is reading at like 0.15 on this ohm scale, because it would be about a 0.2 to 0.25 build, I think normally. Uh, if this scale is right, and I'm wrong, then I apologize. And it turns out my builds are a lot lower than I thought. Thankfully I have pretty safe batteries. So um, I'm using AWT batteries, the uh, 35 or 40 amp ones, I can't remember. But uh, anyways, so let's just stick this through. Again, we want it off more center, push it over and that looks really good. So again, We'll do the negative post first, which is the outside post on a three post build. And on four post builds, it's the two outside posts where the two center posts um, that usually connect together are actually um, the positives. In this case, we just have the one positive and it's the middle one. Okay, that's about as much as I can do by hand. Should be nice and tight there. And let's screw down this center post. Let's do it by hand as much as we can. Tighten it up a little bit with the screwdriver. And it should be pretty good. Yeah, so that's nice and tight. We've got it where we want it, centered relatively well. Uh, they're both pretty well centered. This one's actually a little bit off, but I think it's because of the coil in here. Or sorry, not the coil, the lead. Um, so what we'll do is just move it back a little bit. 
Take it out, move it back, push down a little bit, and now we're looking good. If we can see that, let's see if I can't get a... Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, let's trim the leaves here. I'll do it off camera, because I don't think anyone really needs to see that. And uh, we'll be back in a second. All right, guys, so we're back, and it turns out the ohm reader is working. Um, I don't know why it didn't work or why my uh, hard coil build was so low. But again, six wraps, 0.2 ohms exactly, which is where I thought it would be. Um, so that's really nice that it is working, at least occasionally. Um, so yeah, so we are back, we've trimmed the leads, we're all ready to wick, and all we're going to do is take a piece of Japanese cotton here, and we'll tear off a little bit. Might even be a little bit too much, but we'll see. Uh, in fact, yeah, it's definitely too much, so what we'll do is just cut an air splitter in half here, and that should work out pretty well for us. There we go. Let's do this side first. All I like to do for getting it nice and round is just put it in the center of my palm and just start rolling back and forth like this. And you should get a relatively good wick. Uh, and at the very end, just round it out a little bit so you can pull it through easier. And that's looking pretty good. Take our coil and just run it through. You can see the, the resistance already going up. Let's turn that off for now. Turn it back on once cotton's in. Take our pliers here, or if you have tweezers, those work as well. I need to get myself a pair of those. But uh, right now I just use these needle tip and they seem to work for me. Run it through really gently. I mean, this is going through no problem. I may have even been able to have it a little bit thicker than what I did. And right about, maybe a little more on this side. Uh, probably about there. And that should work. What we'll do is just trim this end off here, about there. Throw it off to the side, and we'll use a screwdriver here to just tuck in this cotton. So again, wrap it around, make sure it's nice and fluffy on the outside so it absorbs that juice really nicely. And tuck it underneath. So we have it like that. Fluff out a little bit. We'll do this side next, same thing. I'm gonna kind of push it inward first, let it fluff up, and then just put the extra kind of tucked underneath, just like that. So again, very fluffy, looking very good. Don't think there's gonna be any issues with uh, the top cap getting in the way, I don't think. Let's tuck that in just a little bit more maybe, and that should work. We'll do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll be back in a second here. All right, guys, we're back. We have now put cotton in both sides. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is if the ohm reader is jumping around a lot, what I'll do is I'll actually uh, put this on a mod and light it up to squeeze it together a little bit tighter. I was pretty happy with where it was. 0.2 ohms is exactly where I wanted it. Uh, let's see what the resistance is with all the cotton in here. So it's reading a 0.35. It should die down once we juice it up a little bit. But uh, let's do that next. And instead of using the BioVapes, I'm actually going to use the, uh, what do we have here? Cloudburst Morning uh, by West Coast Clouds. This is also a three, I don't have very much left. It's kind of like a Fruit Loop blend, which I can't believe I actually like. This one's a little bit different, it's not too bad. Um, but we'll use this strip on. This is definitely not a Max VG. Uh, this is, I believe, it's a 50-50 or 60-40 blend, uh, VG to PG. It's relatively thick, it's not too bad for uh, for something like this, but um, not uh, not exactly Max VG, of course. So all we're gonna do is drip on top here, oh, as I make a mess. Just soak that wick generously. Same thing on this side. And then what we'll do is we'll put it on the mod and we'll start vaping it to see how it vapes. All right guys, so we're back. We've got it all juiced up. Let's take a quick uh, test run on it and see how it produces. 
pretty nice. Uh, so, one thing I will say is I went off camera for a second. I actually had to adjust the uh, 510 connection. It was really tight in there. I ended up having to use a full-size screwdriver here just to, uh, to get it loosened up enough. But just making a connection now, everything seems to be working. Let's put the top cap on and see how it vapes. Make sure we have open airflow because I love my open airflow. Wide open. And let's see if we can get it on. There we go. You can see the coils really nicely, which is nice. Um, coils are definitely visible. And again, just one more quick hit. See it coming out. Let's put the drip tip on. And this thing's actually very hard to get on. I don't know why, but I seem to have trouble when I took it out of the box and did a quick test run on it as well. Uh, And we're good. Okay, let's open up the airflow again because I accidentally knocked it. Uh... Okay, airflow's open. Uh, everything's looking good. Let's take a hit and see how it vapes. A little disappointing see what happened there. Plenty of juice, everything's looking good. Let's put it back on. Uh, one thing I will say about this so far that I'm seeing is that it is a little bit hard to get the top cap on here uh, without this beauty ring type thing around here. Um, getting in the way and falling down a little bit seems to be loose. Okay, it looks to be good now, let's try another hit. That's better. So yeah, so I mean, vapes like any other RDA, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, nothing too special. Looks good. Um, I like it. It's not as good as I was hoping, but I mean, again, it's probably just a coil I built, so I can't really fault it for that. Everything's vaping really nicely. Uh, flavors there. The RDA itself was really easy to build on, as you saw. Uh, no problems there. Nice deep juice well I like. Pretty much, all in all, I really like this RDA. Um, it's the V2 clone by Mephisto, or the uh, the Authentics by Mephisto. This is just a Mephisto El Diablo V2 clone. Um, again, I don't think this is actually Delrin down here. I think it's plastic. I could be wrong. And I did have the issue with the connection pin, but I was able to fix it right away, no problem. So all in all, I like this. Would I recommend it? Um, you know, I'm going to hold off on that for now until I try the original and see how it performs. A few cons, I mean, this drip tip was really hard to get in here. I don't know why, it was just very difficult. Um, the airflow is good, but it's not as good as, say, my Mutation X, but I'm biased. I love that thing. And overall, I mean, the ease of build, or how easy it is to build on, it's definitely easy to build on, so that's a huge plus. I was able to do two 24 gauge dual coils, no problem. Um, we're able to run dual 24 gauge coils, no problem. Uh, it's, uh, apparently it's at about 0.3 ohms. It's not too bad. And yeah, overall, I, I, I'm hesitant to recommend it, so I'll hold off for now. Um, but I, I will say this, I'm gonna try and get the original if I can get one for a decent price. And I'll compare them head to head if I can. If I can't get the original, then I apologize in advance. You're gonna have to take this review for what it is. I mean, again, part of it's a coil build. I kind of rushed a little bit on camera, but um, overall, I I'm happy with it. And again, I asked myself th the same question. Would I rather have my $40 back or would I rather keep this RDA? You know what, for me, it's another one for the collection. I'll be using it, it'll go in my rotation. Uh, the fact that I haven't done an RDA in a while because I've been on the sub-ohm tanks for so long is a huge plus and it, it might be making me a little bit biased, but I'm happy I purchased it, I love it. Um, it it's not something I would recommend at this point unless um, yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's a clone, so it's hard to, to recommend this clone without trying the original first. Like, if you're asking, you know, what should I do, buy the clone or buy the original, um, I can't tell you. If you're asking if you spent $40 or $30 on this, would it be worth it? I think so. Um, but then again, I don't know the price of the clones are in the States. It might be, like, I think, the, or the, not the clones, the, the Authentics. 
if the authentics are only like 20 or 30 bucks more, I, I can't recommend it yet because I haven't tried the authentic to see how close it is. Um, there's a few small issues, like I said, but nothing huge. I I'm happy with it. I guess we'll send the video on that. And until next time, YouTube, happy vaping.